Um, good day, and thanks to Sittel for inviting us to give this presentation. And uh, I'm the funk person that I, I get pushed out to do the the, the, the uh, chat. Um, so this is a account of some of our experiences uh, developing and teaching in, in your indigenized course. And first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, give an Inuit acknowledgement. Uh, we wish to acknowledge the Inuit Tepirit, uh, Kanatami, representing over 65,000 Inuit across the four recognized constituent regions of Inuit Nanangat, uh, Nunavut, Nunatsivut, Nunavik, Inuvirut, and across the rest of Canada, and especially to acknowledge the many, many wrongs done to Inuit, and to thank them for their hospitality and kindnesses to me during my many travels across Inuit lands of Nunavut, Nunatsivut, and Nunatakuvut. So a little bit about the course to start with, uh, just that, so you get sort of some degree of background. Uh, the origins of this course date back to uh, the work by Margaret or Maggie Lobenson of Simon Fraser University. She was a feminist chemist and social activist who uh, had a philosophy that science should be accessible to all, not just exclusively to academics, open to all students and requiring no science background. And so this was the, the philosophy for the Chem 1900 course. Uh, it must start from a zero point of chemistry knowledge, uh, encourage students in all disciplines to take it, it must cover fundamental principles of chemistry, it must include substantial applications content, it must start applications from week one, so not one of these courses where the first half is all boring theory and then the interesting stuff gets shoved at the end. It must be academically rigorous, this is not uh, a Mickey Mouse course with any stretch of the imagination, but what we did was to add to it the additional stipulation that it must include relevant and interesting Inuit content. A little bit about the structure of it too, because this is this has been very important. To, so first of all, uh, that when students make their first post, WRI try and uh, uh, respond to them individually, uh, uh, comment on something they put in their initial post so they feel individually welcome and not just part of a large class. Uh, we try and be available throughout the course. Uh, obviously, we can't be 24 7, uh, but some of our students uh, can only uh, access the material at weekends because they've got a full time job. They might be in another part of the world so that they're looking at this stuff in the middle of the night. So we try and be available as much as we can. Course content, detailed course notes, um, and as you'll see from the images that we put up, subsections each week that we had did not, did you know, but now we've added Inuit relevance to each, each week as well. Learning resources, objectives checklist, key terms, uh, review questions, crossword puzzle, drag and drop activity. So these were all to help them learn the material. A weekly newsletter. We, we found students really regard this highly to actually have a, a weekly newsletter that uh, had comments and, and general responses to students' questions and so on. And weekly assessments. Every week they, the students were required to make two discussion posts, uh, do an activity. It's a lab experiment, but we call it activity because lab activity, lab uh, sounds scary to a lot of students a quiz every week, and then finally, there's a, a midterm and final exams. Now, in 2021, uh, as you all know, that there was a strategic framework for indigenizing, uh, indigenization. And Debbie and I thought this course, Chem 1900, would be a good thing to do. And so we were thinking about adding Inuit connections, but they had to be relevant. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen so-called Canadian textbooks where they have a picture of Parliament Hill instead of the White House and a few other trivial editions or something totally irrelevant to the content of the, of the, of the textbook. So this had to be relevant. We were starting to work on it, and then this was January of this year, and 
by absolute total coincidence, we had an email asking us whether we teach a section of this course to students of Nunavut Arctic College. And uh, Nunavut Arctic College uh, has to have the, uh, serves the, the largest post-secondary region in Canada uh, and is one of the largest in the world. So it covers all the Inuit lands, well, all of Nunavut rather. And uh, some of the students uh, were doing a Bachelor of Education uh, jointly with Memorial University Faculty of Education and the nine communities involved with 88 students. And for some of these students, they really needed another science course. And they were, they were unaware that we were actually indigenizing uh, or inutizing our course. So this was one of these bizarre coincidences. So we were very fortunate because uh, I'd been working over the years with two, well, up to the present time, with, with two uh, Inuk students, uh, Shane Christiana Anderson of Nain, and more recently, Rosalina Nakitavik of Arctic Bay in Nunavut. And uh, we'd been working on article, or articles uh, focusing on different aspects of Inuit life and culture and relating them to chemistry. This has now all been published in a special issue of Chem 13 News, a magazine for uh, high school chemistry students. And this is a very substantial piece of work. It's actually 72 pages devoted solely to the work of the three of us on chemistry and Inuit life and culture. And it's now being distributed, the print edition, to every single high school across Canada. But uh, some of the what we, uh, we did, Shane, Roslina and myself, was really relevant. And in, did, but in addition, we had to think about making it relevant to the course itself. So what I'm going to do now is to introduce you to some of the course content and show you what it looks like. I realize you can't read any of the, what's on display here, but apart from the headings, but just to give you a flavor as to what the course materials look like. So the very first a uh, week was devoted to elements and 1.8 was devoted to metals. And this was uh, work with Chaim and looking at the, the woman's tool, the Ulu. And in this, sub this section, the Inuit relevance, it was looking at the different metals uh, that had been used in Inuit culture to, to make the Ulu. Uh, uh, I won't show every every single week, but this is now week three, and this is looking at atmospheric chemistry. And here's the, the current atmosphere section, 3.6. And this is uh, something that's very important in the far north, is the aurora. When, you, when you've got uh, 24 hours of darkness in the middle of winter, the aurora takes on a very specific uh, uh, importance. And so this is a feature uh, on the on the aurora, and we start off by looking at some of the children's tales that are, that the Inuit have created around the the northern lights, and uh, then into the origins of the, the northern lights, and that brings us back to atomic structure, looking at ground state and excited state. So the Inuit relevance doesn't just sort of stand on its own; it feeds back into the course content. So the only mention in the in the that week of excited states is within the Inuit relevance, and then we build on that. Week four starts the organic chemistry and the hydrocarbons, and this was a topic that uh, we couldn't find anything in the, the work done with Chaim and, and Rosalina. So Debbie and I came up with this particular topic, looking at snowmobiles because these, of course, are very important in the Arctic, and look at the special oils that uh, have to be used in the intense cold and the chemistry of them, the, the different hydrocarbons they used. And Debbie found this wonderful uh, video, and you see it down near the bottom of your screen, where two students compare the viscosity of regular engine oil with the special oil created for the Arctic. Six, we touch on ice 
and well, don't touch on it, is, is a major topic with hydrogen bonding for those of you with some chemistry background. And this relates back to uh, snow and the igloo and uh, Kagik, uh, the, the large uh, igloo tack constructions. And also we, we also get into uh, using snow as an insulator because of the trapped air uh, within the structure of the, of the, of the snow. Uh, we skip here to eight, which is which is on ionic compounds, and eight point ten is specifically on silicates, and this led into a topic which was uh, covered with uh, Rosalina, the soapstone and the culic. The culic is the is the uh, soapstone uh, vessel that's used for uh, with seal oil in it for heating, lighting, cooking, and uh, there you can see it's related back to the chemical structure, looking at the structure of calc, one of the two components of soapstone. Uh, then we, we're obliged to the Toronto Inuit uh, Association for providing a video on how a colic is made. And then finally, we, we uh, show a, a photo of the lighting of the colic when Nunavut was declared a separate territory. Uh, in, in 10, we get into foodstuffs, and this particular one is fatty acids and fats. And this links into uh, Arctic char, which is the mainstay of the fish diet in, in Inuit lands. And the structure, uh, and the, one of the main components, and also soy sauce, which is the become the condiment of choice in the uh, up in the, in the north and look at it and the, the vitamin benefits. So if you look at the structures embedded in this again, I want to emphasize that uh, this Inuit relevance is not just a, a trivial side on that we, we work into it, the content, we show the, the different uh, structures and we work it right into the course itself. Evidence on natural polymers and the different types and this was work done again with uh, with Rosalina and uh, look at clothing now take this nature of collagen uh, how it's made up and the destructive the, and then get into some of the the types of, of clothing the amalty the the one worn by women with young babies with an extra hood in the back and then into waterproofing and this then brings us back to hydrogen bonding and, and non-polar materials. So we keep looping back into chemistry content and, and the Inuit relevance becomes a real constituent part of the course. So you've seen a, a few samples of what we've done. Let's say we could have bored you with a, another hour's worth of that. But what's important is how the students responded to it. And first of all, and the Nunavut Arctic College students. So my immediate reaction to the course was nervousness. But after reading the course materials and all of the introduction, I'm extremely thrilled to begin this course, and I'm pleased that the Inuit culture will be included. It must have been quite a shock when the students were suddenly told <laughs> you're doing a chemistry course starting next week. And another comment that first uh, I'm excited about taking the chemistry course, especially because our Inuit culture will be incorporated into the course. Uh, Inuit culture and tradition are very important to me, especially our language, so I'm happy they will be incorporated. What I found most interesting was the Rock of Ages section. Uh, the Rock of Ages with my little uh, reference to Def Leppard's song of the same title, and how you added the relevance to Inuit. I really appreciate that as it shows that you got you guys value your indigenous students. Or oh, this heartfelt one. I can't wait until 10.30 p.m. because of course that's midnight Newfoundland time. So I can start on the checkpoint and activity for week 10. I love this Chem 1900 course so much and I'm so upset that it's coming to an end soon. I, what more could you get? Um, 
And then finally, I want to show appreciation to instructors for trying their best to put Inuit relevance in our week's content. To me, it shows that we are appreciated as students. I love when us Inuit and our culture feels included. I'll never forget your support and kindness. So this is the response from the Nunavut Arctic College students. Uh, but what about the response when we taught it to a regular class of Memorial University students? So we, we were anxious about that. We, we, we didn't know what our response was likely to be. And it, by the way, we were just delighted that the Nunavut students were, were really happy with it too. Uh, my favorite thing I learned in week one, besides the start of chemistry in the universe, was about the Ulu. I've known about them before, but learning about the metals they are maybe of was a fascinating, a very fascinating point of last week. Then another student. As an international student in Canada, I knew of the indigenous peoples, but had no deep knowledge or understanding of them. Traditional cultures fascinate me because even without the fancy gadgets we can't live without today, they still manage to build amazing structures and the Ulu is just one of the everyday tools they use to build their lives from the ground up. They are remarkably resourceful and I'm loving the recyclability they foster. This is early on in the course and a little later on we're getting comments back such as this one. I believe that having the Inuit features incorporated into each week's reading is a great way to honor the Inuit culture in our country. Not only does it provide interesting examples of how chemistry is all around us in our everyday lives, but it's also an opportunity to learn more interesting facts about Inuit people and their culture. The Inuit features quickly became my favorite part of weekly course readings, and I can't wait to learn more in the coming weeks. The Inuit features in this course are very important in my opinion. I think learning about Inuit culture is essential to us as Canadians. These course features allow us to understand specific aspects of Inuit culture and life that can be related to chemistry. I think having Inuit features in this course is a great addition. I find it engaging. But I should mention uh, that we, we had dozens of different comments. It's hard to pick out which ones to include or leave out. Very interesting to learn about the culture of the Inuit people and relate it back to chemistry. I've learned a lot about how chemistry works in the everyday lives of the Inuit. That's something I can take with me when I'm finished with this course. I think it's such a significant aspect of this course as we're on the land of the Indigenous people, including these individuals with our study, really important. Finally, this feature is one of the reasons I chose the course to begin with. What more could you could you add to that one? So uh, I'd like to thank the Centre for Innovation in Teaching and Learning because, as you can tell, they did a wonderful job putting the, the, the content of this course together. It was a phenomenal work. It looks gorgeous on screen, not just the, what we've done, but the way they've formatted it and put it all together, the, the way they've done the, uh, put together the drag and drops and so on. Uh, the Grenfell Campus School of Science and the Environment because uh, they're the ones that supported the uh, the offering of Chem 1900 and supported the offering of it particularly online as, uh, as a distance course. And of course, thank you to Chaim and Rosalina. What would we have done with them without them uh, stimulating things in the first place? And thank you to, to the, the the Nunavut Arctic College class of 2022, who uh, are the first ones ever to encounter this course. And here's thank you in the different dialects and languages. Well, that was a minefield, but we won't go there. Uh, for, for Debbie and myself, uh, we, uh, we innocently thought it was very simple, but we were very quickly put right that, uh, that uh, and thank you certainly from myself and Debbie and uh, looking forward to, to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, what I will suggest doing and all the attendees as well, I'm going to change everybody's status to that of a panelist so people can unmute themselves and ask questions as they wish rather than um, ask for permission to do so. So please don't be alarmed. You're not allowed, you're not required to speak, but uh, this will give you an opportunity to do so if you wish to. Just changing everybody's status. And here we go. 
Any questions for Jeff are welcome at this point. Jeff, there's a question in the chat from Robin. Thank you very much for your presentation. Would you have any suggestions for a statistics course? Who? Cool. Um, this, is, this is a question that, that Debbie and I have wrestled with as to how um, this could be applied in other areas, particularly in the sciences, because I, I think most people assume that indigenization would primarily be with the humanities. Um, statistics. I'm not sure. The, the thing to realize is we have the uh, Office of Indigenous Affairs, and I think I think the best way is is to try and follow our route if you can. Uh, shame coming into the the class in uh, at Grenfell was was what started this off because she and I got talking about it. I think if you can, uh, if you have an Indigenous student in your class or an urban indigenous student taking your subject areas, they're the ones to talk with. They, they, they really are. That's the first sort. Uh, now with, with Chaim and then later Rosalina, well, particularly with Chaim, it was, uh, she joined me on outreach and it was during the chats over, over dinner and things like that, that, uh, that this really transpired into where she would come up with a particular topic and I'd, be able to add to it and say, oh yeah, this can be explained in terms of intermolecular forces, da, 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 and that's how these things all start. Up. So I think it, it's got to start with contacting um, Indigenous students who have a background not only in their own culture, but in terms of the subject area that, uh, that uh, you're interested in. Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we have a comment from Ivan. Uh, correct. You have to decolonize first. Settlers cannot indigenize, is what he's saying. Hi, may I, may I ask a question? Oh, you, you mean the terminology is incorrect. Ap apologize. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure who was speaking there. Uh, yes, you're, you're welcome to ask a question. Sorry, this is Hilda Nielsen in physics uh, in St. John's. Uh, when you do your content, like for instance, the chapter on Aurora, you talk, you go from stories to chemistry, but how was the uh, influence of elders and traditional knowledge in the methodologies of this understanding of science, as opposed to just fitting the story and the experience into Western traditions? Oh, well, um, it, that's a good question. It, it's, it's, how much can you detail off the chemistry if it's a chemistry course? Um, if you read the article that Chaim and I put together in Chem 30 News, uh, she provides a lot more of the context. But in the in the account of how it fits in with the chemistry, we could we could only put a certain proportion of the of the uh, of the context. Otherwise, it, it's going to cease being a chemistry course. So I don't think I was being overly clear. I think the challenge I have is you have a, a content that's related to uh, Inuit experience, but what are in the Inuit methodologies of doing science in this course? Um, the methodology. Um, we, we're trying to uh, so in each case, linkages, uh, so we have uh, some cultural content, um, then we, then we, we, we show the, the chemistry associated with that. That's, that's the methodology. Is 
So your that's your methodology. So you're fitting the indigenous knowledge into your perspective. Yes. You're not actually, you're not actually highlighting the indigenous methods and ways of doing science. It, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry, there's also um, a follow up from uh, from Ivan. Actually, I meant that you just missed the mention of the moment of decolonizing before you allowed uh, Chain and Rosalina to bring their perspectives into the course. Could you say it one again? Uh, sure, you can also see it in the chat there, uh, Jeff, if, if that helps at all, uh, but I can certainly read it again. Actually, I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it there? Yeah. You enjoy. You allow Chayma and Rosalina bring their perspectives into the course. Yes. Oh, definitely. And and with quotes from them. Do we have any other questions for Jeff? Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask those or put them in the chat. Hi, um, I have a question and apologies. I'm uh, feeling under the weather, so my brain is turning very slowly. I'm not quite sure how to word it, so I'm going to ramble for a bit and hopefully a question will appear. Um, so you mentioned um, like reaching out to students as uh, like indigenous students as a good way to incorporate indigenous perspectives. However, these are students. Um, they're not being maybe they are being paid. Like, how do you balance like the ethics or like asking these indigenous people to do not? And this is going to sound bad, and I don't mean in a bad way, but to do some of your work and and provide these perspectives, like. Do you have like some ideas on like compensation or like volunteers? Or I think you did mention going to the Office of Indigenous Affairs. So I'm trying to get at the point of balancing like incorporating indigenous voices, but also not requiring them to do like all of the work for like non-indigenous people. So hopefully that's a that's a question at the end of things. And I don't mean to cause any offense in any way. Yeah. Um well, I think it's a case of finding anyone who can provide these links because the, um, that they, they were willing to 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 work with me and uh, uh, and they enjoyed working on these projects. Um, it's hard to find people who, who who have their knowledge of not only of their culture but also of the subject area and and. Uh, they, and I should add that uh, they not only incorporated their knowledge, but if you read the articles in, in Chem 30 News, that they actually talked with elders in their own community and provided uh, some, some conversations they had with the elders in their community. So they weren't, they weren't in isolation. They, uh, they worked with, with people in their own community, but they were the link uh, between uh, their, their culture and chemistry. Does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, that helps. It's just like a, it's a conversation happening like nationwide. It's like, we are so excited about indigenizing everything, but it's so tough because the white people, of course, or, or the non-indigenous people can't provide that knowledge. And there's so few indigenous people um, like myself, it's like we, we're getting talked to or, or provoked by so many people. Um, it's really tough to, to be the, the people who are responding to everyone because we have our own jobs or our own like, mm -hmm. um, things that we're working with. So it's, it's just a broad question. Obviously I don't have an answer for it. So I just wanted to get someone who's actually done something about it and done a really great course. I just yeah. wanted your perspectives, um, to add to the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's, it's, we agree it's a very important topic and it's, it's uh, and one of my concerns was simply that, that many chemists across Canada simply say, oh, well, we can't do anything. And, and, and this is, and I'd had comments from uh, uh, 
chemistry faculty out in BC, this has stimulated them to, to work with uh, some of the Pacific Coast Indigenous people. Do we have any other questions or comments? It sounds like this course is that it's entirely online. Is that correct? Oh, it's it's all online. It's it's a uh, it's a distance course. That's how we were able to do it with the uh, with the students of Nunavut Arctic College. It's a completely distance course. So, do students have any? Given that this is a chemistry course, do, how do students do students get any lab experience locally or any experience talking to people in both chem, relative to both chemistry or uh, Inuit knowledge in, in local in the local uh, areas? Well, they they, uh, uh, they have a weekly activity which is actually a, a lab exercise. But it's a very good point that we should uh, look into the possibility of adding some uh, activities that are. Uh, 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 indigenous base that actually we uh, came and I'd worked on one years ago, and that that's an excellent idea. We'd see if we can work that into the into the actual course itself. All right, we'll do a last call for questions, uh, Jeff, before we close the session, perhaps. So we'll wait another minute or so. All right, if there aren't any more questions, um, Jeff and, and Debbie as well, you're still there. Um, on behalf of CITL and uh, everybody here today, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to speak to us today on this topic. And uh, everyone, thank you for attending the webinar uh, or this particular webinar of the CITL uh, instructor series for the fall. And I'm also going to put in the chat a, a link to other um, events that we have in uh, CITL. I think we only have one more of these sessions left at this point for the semester. There's another set of sessions coming up in the winter. Uh, so we hope to see you there. Uh, you can explore the calendars and see if there's anything um, of interest to, uh, to you. All right, thank you very much, um, Jeff and Debbie again, and thank you to all the attendees. Thank you.